welcome to KU Padachala. I am Dr. Ranjit, Assistant Professor from University College, Toronto. So in this video, I want to give you a comprehensive introduction to one of the key concepts of quantum mechanics which are stationary states. As you know, the existence of stationary states with discrete energies which was postulated by Niel Bohr in order to explain atomic spectra. Before going into the concept of stationary state, let me talk some fundamental concepts that the theory of quantum mechanics is based on. As you know, every theory in physics is based on a set of assumptions that we are assumed to be true, which are commonly known as axioms or postulates. Basically, there are five postulates in quantum mechanics. The interesting fact is that the entire theory of quantum mechanics is based on these postulates. Let us look what the structure of these postulates looks like. The first postulate enables us to understand how a quantum state is described mathematically at a given time t. This postulate states that the state of a quantum system is specified at each time t by a state vector psi which contains all the information about the system. The second, third and fourth postulate enable us to understand how to calculate various physical quantities from this quantum state. And the final postulate give you an equation which explains how the state of a system evolves in time. That is, knowing the state of a system at a time t, we can find the state of the system at any later time t. As I said earlier, the time evolution of the state vector psi of a system is governed by the time dependent Schrodinger equation or it can be simply called as Schrodinger equation which is given by i h cross d over dt psi equal to h psi of t where psi of t is the state vector of the system h is an operator which is commonly known as Hamiltonian operator. This is the functional form of Hamiltonian operator that is h equal to p square by 2m plus v where p is the linear momentum of the particle and m is the mass of the particle. Here v represents the potential energy which the particle is subjected to. Now I have a question for you. Is this Schrodinger equation an eigenvalue equation? In general, we can say this is not an eigenvalue equation. This is because on the right hand side of the equation, we can see the operator h which is not a constant. As long as h is an operator, this will not be a energy eigenvalue equation. But one of the interesting facts about Schrodinger equation is that for eigenstates of Hamiltonian operator, Schrodinger equation will reduce us to an energy eigenvalue equation. Now we want to examine how quantum state of a system evolves in time. That is, given the initial state psi 0, how does one find the state psi of t at a later time t. The two states psi of t and psi of 0 can be related by means of a linear operator u such that psi of t equal to u acting on psi of 0 where u is a operator which is known as time evolution operator or time development operator. Here, psi of 0 is the state vector of the system at t equal to 0. 
suppose we have a system where Hamiltonian is independent of time. If the Hamiltonian is independent of time, then the form of time evolution operator would be u equal to e raised to minus i h t by h cross where h is the Hamiltonian operator and this operator represents a finite time translation. We have to note that this time development operator is unitary in nature. In position representation, the position space wave function of a given system is usually denoted by the wave function psi which is usually a function of r and t. One can ask how do we get this position space wave function psi for a given potential v. The answer is we need to solve time dependent Schrodinger equation for the given potential v. Now let me consider the particular case of time independent potentials. That is the potential energy function v is independent of time. As you know for conservative systems this is always true. In such cases where the potential function is independent of time, the Hamiltonian operator will also constant in time and hence the Schrodinger equation will have solutions that are separable. That is solutions that consist of a product of two functions, one depending on position only and the other depends on time only. Then the separation of variables will decouple the Schrodinger equation which is a partial differential equation into two ordinary differential equations. One depending on the space coordinates r only and this is commonly known as time independent Schrodinger equation. The other equation is i h cross into d over dt phi equal to e into phi. This equation contains time only. The equation which depends on time only is a first order differential equation in time and hence it is very easy to solve. On solving this equation we get phi as e raised to minus i e t over h cross where E is the total energy of the system. Hence, the quantum state of a particle which is subjected to a time independent potential V of R would become psi of RT that is equal to psi of R into E raised to minus psi ET by H cross. This particular solutions of Schrodinger equation for a time independent potential is known as stationary states. Now let me explain what's so great about stationary states or separable solutions of Schrodinger equation. First one is each stationary state has a precise value of energy that is every measurement of total energy on a stationary state will return a definite value of energy. Another important property of stationary state is that in any stationary state the probability density does not depend on time or the probability density is constant. Also if we calculate the expectation value of any dynamical variable of the system in such a stationary state then that expectation value will be constant in time or it is independent of time. And the last one is probability current density. In any stationary state probability current density is also constant in time. Hope the ideas of Schrodinger equation and stationary states are clear. And so let me stop here. Thank you for listening.